platform right now. Party, brother. It's time to. Yeah, man. Definitely. It's, no time it. it's time to do it inside this inside because you know we can't go outside. It's ugly. Where you guys at? We out in South Jersey right now. I'm sure you want to look like you're here. Okay. I'm sure you what we're working with here. But y'all can go ahead and start. I'm just showing folks around. Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, man. Another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast in the building. It's a special edition. I'm saying, man, from viral hip hop news across to me. It's your brother, old guy, Hip Hop News Uncensored, man, for another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast featuring none other than Miguel Nunez. Man. DMZ specialist. <laughs> My man got the cigarette out popping in LA, man. I, oh, man. It's pretty Ricky what they called him. Dog, we are so excited. To have you in the building today first and foremost how are you doing what's it like out in la what's it like oh. dealing with COVID 19 right now out there let me show you what's going on out here right now it is really 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 bad as you can see look outside but hmm. hopefully now they're saying it's airborne we got rain we got it's really bad but everybody here is staying inside which is really good because we all know nothing is more important then staying inside because the moment you go outside, you can be exposed again and you can again give it to somebody else. So people in California hopefully are listening. Maybe they're not at the beach anymore because they can't be. But I think this this is a whole new ball game for us guys. This is not going to change. And I think this is really, really, really going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, man. We um, you know, welcome you, Miguel Nunez. You know, I'm um, to the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast today, episode 339. Um, I guess we can get started, man. Just talking about you know, um, your journey to Hollywood. You know, from North Carolina, you made your way. You know, um, I, I was listening to your story, and you, you know, you said you made a few hundred bucks, you know, from a paycheck, and you just went on a whim and said, "I got to get over there." So, can you just, you know, for the people, explain your journey from North Carolina to Hollywood? if you may, and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Miguel A. Nunez Jr. You guys know me as Juana Man, Life Scooby Doo, all of that nine stuff. But here's the most important thing. Um, I was, I'm was i from a little town in North Carolina called Wilson, North Carolina. It's a little farming town. And every day of my life, I told everybody who would listen to me, I'm going to be a movie star. When I, when I first started the first grade, my... Um, I had a jean jacket, which I could still wear in the 12th grade. And I, um, I took a, a magic marker and wrote Hollywood on the back of it. My nickname was Hollywood because I said every day of my life, I'm going to be a movie star. I knew it with every fiber of my being. Every single person who I ever ran into, who I ever met, who I ever went to school with, who I ever told about it, including family family members, everybody told me I was absolutely crazy. You're poor, you're skinny, you're ugly, you're black, you're on the, out here on a farm. There is no way you're going to become an actor. You need to come up with something more realistic. Damn. And I told everybody, I guarantee you, I promise you it's going to happen. I promise you. I knew it with every fiber of my being. And then and when I graduated from school, I'd already planned on what I was going to do the whole week and everything. And just split second i got my first paycheck from working in a tobacco factory and i said you know what i should freaking go to california right now i have the money so i actually packed the made three bologna sandwiches wrote a note and ran away to california never really realized the seriousness of what i had actually done until i actually got off the bus downtown la because i thought it was going to be the movie stars and i was just going to be a movie star and that was it i thought you know i did not realize the seriousness of what I'd done. I didn't even have money. I never even thought about where I was gonna stay because in my heart and soul, I knew every single second that it was gonna happen. There was no doubt in my mind. And then when I got here, I only, the first time I realized the seriousness of what I'd done was when the bus landed downtown LA. When I first went to the bus station, North Carolina, it was a trailway station. And I asked that white man, can I get a ticket to Hollywood? He said, no, <laughs> I, I thought, you had to be an actor to get into Hollywood. That's how Damn. naive I was. That's how naive I was. What year are we so, talking? What year are we huh? talking? What, you, what about what year are we talking right now? Oh, that was 1980. Okay. Okay. So now I go up to, and he said, you go to Los Angeles. I said, okay. So I'm thinking I'm going to get there. There's going to be the lights, cars, and movie stars, and everything. I didn't realize that Trailways went to the Skid Row. Greyhound went to um, Hollywood. Went to uh, Hollywood. 
So I thought you had to be an actor to get into Hollywood. When actuality, it was, I was at the wrong bus station. But when I landed downtown LA on Skid Row, it was the nastiest, most disgusting place I'd ever seen in my life. I ended up walking around in the street for maybe, I mean, first they kicked me out of the bus station. That's when I realized what I'd done. It was nasty and disgusting. It was Skid Row, the worst place you could possibly be in Los Angeles at the time. There was a Skid Row slasher going on. I was four foot 11 and I weighed 75 pounds when I graduated from high school. I looked like a 10 year old. <laughs> and and I, I was so hungry and starving and I did not know what to do. I literally did not know what to think because I definitely wasn't gonna call back home. I was from a big family on a farm and I, I was embarrassed and. And, and I just didn't know what to think. So I ended up walking around and walking around and walking around. I ended up going to an all night movie theater because it was only a dollar. And I remember having $2 left. And I remember being in the movie theater and there were so many um, um, uh, 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 rats. So I was sitting in the chair with my leg up like this and I'd be asleep like this. And every few minutes I'd wake up and there was another person in the movie theater all the way down at the beginning. And in North Carolina, we all kept a box razor like this. Pop, you pop it out and it was a razor they used to open boxes. Mm -hmm. I always kept mine in my hand. So I'm falling asleep. And every time I wake up, look like the head was getting closer and closer. And the last time I woke up, some big, nasty motherfucker sitting right next to me. And I popped my razor out. I popped my razor out. That was just God's way of taking care of me early. I popped the razor out. He got up and left. So from that point on, I would spend all night just walking around, walking around. And I didn't even know you could sleep while standing up. And I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know where to go. I ended up sleeping behind the bus station because it was the only place I knew. And one day I'm sleeping under a park bench and it's raining. Some guy, remember, I look like a child. He was like, dude, why are you out here in the street? He's a young man. He thought I was a kid. And I was like, well, I came up I, and I talked like this when I first got here because my nickname was Country Boy. That's all I talked like. <laughs> and I said, I said, I came here to be an actor. And he was like, oh, my God. And I kept wondering why everybody was going, oh, my God. Why they would say that. And then he ended up telling me about the Union Rescue Mission. I ended up going to the Union Rescue Mission. Now, if you go to the Union Rescue Mission, Union Rescue Mission is a homeless shelter. But back then, right now, it's a $15, $20 billion something, a Jewish, really amazing Jewish family left them. And But when I went there, it was one little nasty, stinking, dirty hole in the wall, which was a church. And we slept on pews. And you just sit like that and bums be laying on you this way and they be hanging on you that way and stinking and scratching all night. And then that next morning, I wake up and I remember just scratching, itching and scratching. I was like, I went to the man, I said, listen, What's, why, why am I itching something? He said, you have lice on you. Damn. And I, was like, and I was like, what is that? He said, something growing on you. Oh. So then I, I go downstairs, they take your clothes off, they spray you with poison, and they got on masks, and they just spraying you all in the face and mouth. And they spray you with poison, they wash your clothes, and they get your clothes back. So I'm going through that. I was end up being in the Union Rescue Mission for about six months because I didn't know what to do. I couldn't get a job. I was stealing money out of the height region, we, Regency wishing well, taking coins just to eat a meal. I mean, I would go sell my blood plasma for $7 a day. I would uh, uh, sell, put those little annoying newspapers on your door all morning and I would work my ass off just to get something to eat every single day. And then one day I'm on a bus. <laughs> well, let me skip forward. So now this goes on. Then I end up getting a job at Rancho Los Amigos Hospital in Downey, California, as a physical therapist technician under the CEDA program, which was a uh, for homeless for people who were getting a county check. I worked that for a year, and this is how it started. I saved up my money. I, 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 my rent was only uh, uh, the hotel. The, the, the county. I ended up getting on there on welfare from the Union Rescue Mission. Mm -hmm. And the hotel they put you at was called the Ford Hotel, 1000 East 7th Street, still there today. And it was the shittiest hotel you ever imagined in your life. But it was some, it was inside. And then they gave us three meals a day at the Busy Bee restaurant. And all you had to do was sign a voucher. So I did that until I got a job at Rancho Sauce Amigos Hospital, which was like nine buses, two hours away. And I did it for two years in the hot sun. And I did it and I saved up my money. I told my supervisor, listen, I wanted to be an actor and I met other guys now that were homeless. So we had like this little homeless crew and I kept telling everybody what I was going to do. And they kept saying the same thing. Nigga, you're homeless, you're poor, you're black, you're skinny, you're ugly, you're on skid row, you're homeless. 
how are you going to be an actor? They got actors in New York, Chicago, LA. And that goes to tell every single body here listening, nobody on this planet has to believe in your dream, but you, yeah. nobody in this planet has to believe in you, believe you. If you have enough power and enough faith in what you want to do and what you believe and what you can think you can accomplish, nobody can stop that. Every single time. Now, let me skip. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you. So now I'm, uh, and now I'm, I'm, I'm not, I got a little shitty hotel and I got a job. And then one day I'm on a bus and some guy's sitting next to me on the bus going, he's going. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to a catacomb. I said, what's that? He said, oh, yeah, they're, they're having a commercial uh, audition for a commercial in the park. And anybody, I said, oh, really? I said, I can't make to be an actor. How do you do it? He said, here, here's my resume. Take the resume. You got to get a resume. You got to get pictures. You got to get an agent, blah, 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 blah. I watch him get off the bus and I look across at the park and I see cameras and stuff. So I get off on the next stop. I go to a, a copy place. I write his name out on his resume, put mine on it. And I go back and get in line, and I got the lead in that commercial. It was a Gino's restaurant commercial, and I got the lead in it. Mm. And I didn't have an agent, so the guy was like, how do you get it? Da, da, da. I said, I just came on here, and I did it. And they gave it to me, da, da. He said, you don't have an agent? So the guy took me to his agent, the guy who gave me the picture stuff. He wasn't mad. I don't know. But anyway, so later on, he goes to me. Uh, uh, I go to the agent, and I said, listen, if you send me more of those cattle things, you can have all this money. I just want to be in movies and I want to be on TV shows. I want to be in movies. And he was like, hey, hey, slow down, slow down. All right, all right. I'm going to sign you up because I like you. And from that point on, I think that, and this is straight off the street, the next 50 auditions he got me, I had, I got probably 48 of them. Damn. And and I was on a series wow. three years later, Tour of Duty on CBS, which was a hit drama show. But let me tell you something. That's God. You have got to have God in your life. If you don't have God in your life, it won't work. And let me tell you something else. You have got to not let anybody decide what it is you can or cannot do. I'll, I'll give you an example. I remember walking up to people saying, listen, I want to be an actor. I want to go inside Universal Studio Tour. I want to go inside Universal Studio and I want to walk around on the soundstage and I want to see how they do it. And everybody was like, Figure you out of your mind. They ain't going to let you go inside Universal Studio and do that. You can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean I can't? Mm. So I go to Universal Studio anyway. I walk up to the man. I said, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Miguel Nunez. I'm from Wilson, North Carolina. And I came here to be an actor. And I would like to walk around the stage and see how it's done. And he was like, man, you don't get your skinny, ugly self out of here. No one, you can't do that. So I just didn't understand that. And this is what I did in every single thing in my life. I said, okay, fine. I don't get you can't. I don't get they won't let you. And if I had got that, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I saved up, started selling my blood plasma, saving up my money, ended up taking a Universal Studio tour. And I'm on the studio tour and I'm looking, I'm looking, and looking, and I go, oh, got him. Got him. So the next one was go back home, save up my money, sell my blood plasma, sell my blood plasma, save up my, um, I, I, and then I go back, take the Universal Studio tour. Now, I'm on the tour. There's a part of the tour where the lady goes, okay, everybody, I want you to get off the tram. Okay, now move over to the side. Okay, now we're going to go inside this sound stage, and I want everybody, you're going to see exactly how they do TV shows. Okay, so this way, come on, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And while they were going this way, this way, this way, this way, I went that way, that way, that way, that way. Mm. And I went around to every single sound stage, and I went and did exactly what they told me I could not do. <clears throat> and that's when every single thing somebody told me I could not do, it could not happen. If you look at a movie called Jumping Jack Flash, there's going to be a scene in Jumping Jack Flash where Whoopi Goldberg gets to dress and she's like dressed up <clears throat> and she's walking down the sidewalk. And you're going to see the skinniest looking, ugliest looking, crackhead looking, the homeliest person you've ever seen in your life. And it's me. And I walk up, well, hey, baby, what's going on? Da -da. I was homeless at the time downtown LA when they were shooting Jumping Jack Flash. And I was, when they had their lunch, I would go home and I would try, sneak in line and, and, and take food off the truck to eat. And they was like, get out of here, shoot, shoot. And they, they ended up telling me, get out of there. Joel Silver, one of the biggest producers in this building, Die Hard, uh, uh, all of these films, Joel Silver said, no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. And he talked to me, he said, he's homeless, let him eat. He let me, he gave me a roll in that. 
He gave me a role in uh, uh, Jumping Jack Flash. He gave me a role in Die Hard. He gave me a role in all of those movies because I was homeless on the street. Joel Silver did. Talk, let's, let's talk. I'm going to talk about your mom, if you don't mind. You absolutely. You, it was it was incredible. You said that she wrote um, James Brown. It's a man's world. That's one of my favorite records of all time. I think I was listening to that joint. We was in here working out a couple of days yeah. ago. Um, but I know that you went from your mother and then went to North Carolina with your grandparents. So talk about your relationship with your mother. Talk about how talent kind of just runs in your family. And is anybody else in your family? Because I know you got a, a number of siblings as well. Are they into acting as well? Is this something that is in you, in your DNA and in you guys' DNA? Well, my mom, okay, my mom is a whole <laughs> story. My mom, my mom was, my mom dated James Brown, Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson, all of these guys right after one another. My mother went, ran away from home in the same farmhouse that I was raised at because my grandparents were so strict. She ran away from that house when she was 17, went to New York. And she was 17 in New York. And she ended up in New York and she ended up going out with James Brown, all of these people, because she was on a TV show called Hollabaloo. Hollabaloo was the first American bandstand music show. And my mother, because she was mixed and had this long hair and everything, she was up in these, and she was one of the go-go girls that was up in these little uh, 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 little things, in little cubicles on the stage. She was a go-go girl with the go-go boots and the long hair. And she would come home with James Brown and, and Ali and all of these people in North Carolina. And the whole time we grew up, we could never call her mom because she didn't want anybody to know she had a, a, a child. But mm. while she was with James Brown, she wrote "It's a Man's World," and that's that's her that's her claim to fame. She wrote that song, uh, "It's a Man's World," James Brown's biggest hit. And we're right now going through problems because some guy has been had, had uh, went behind her back and used her and, and trying to steal the rights and all of this elderly abuse stuff. So we're dealing with all of that right now, trying to work her rights out right now. She's still alive and, and yeah, still yeah, she's still alive. It. She's in New York right now. And if you saw, she's gonna want to hang out with you. Why y'all ain't got me on that back? Oh, that's Why y'all ain't got me on that <laughs> Could you explain to some of the people or uh, you know, talk to some of the people about some of your inspirations and wanting to get to Hollywood? Like some people that inspired you, some people that you wanted to be like, you know, as a youngster in Hollywood. Never, ever, mm. ever had anybody. Mm. That was an inspiration to me. When I grew up, I swear to you, I, my mother said when I was like five, five years old or something, she spanked me and I told her, when I become a movie star, I'm not going to buy you nothing. I had never even seen TV when I said I wanted to be a movie star. I have no clue to this day where it came from. I used to sit in that hall, in that, on that farmhouse, because it was like uh, all five of my brothers, seven of my brothers, plus my five aunts, because my mother had seven kids, each one. Every year she had a kid. As soon as they got three years old, she took them and gave them to my grandmother, because my grandmother had a farm and needed boys. Next, wow. uh, next year she had another boy. She took them home and gave them to my grandmother because she needed a boy. Next, uh, next year I had a boy, and she this happened seven times, and then I got my baby who's a sister. So we were all given to my grandparents when we were little. And I never even watched television going. The only thing I ever watched was Flintstones. The Flintstones. Uh, I never watched them. I used to walk past my aunts looking at TV going, how can they watch this stupid box and they can be outside playing? I don't ha know where it came from. There are things in every single one of us, and it is up to us to decipher them. I could have not looked at that and not seen that and not and, and said there's no inspiration. That God got something, gave everybody a gift. We all have a gift. It's up to us to discern that gift and to use that gift. And I'm just so blessed that that I saw it, I recognized it, I and, and I went for it. And I didn't let anything discourage me because I could tell you stories you would not believe of what I went through. Homeless, nobody, nobody. Nobody, all my family's in North Carolina. It was the hardest thing waking up behind the bus station, freezing, starving, didn't know. And then you got to. Hello, you back? We're here, we're here, we're here. Yep. Hello. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? We hear, we see, we hear you. We can still hear. Uh, uh, all right, so all right, we'll, we'll transition then. We, we were talking about. Yeah, um, let's transition. We'll transition. Let's right. transition. So Hollywood, man, you've been in more movies. Shit, you pretty much stayed on my TV in the nineties. When we talk about Friday the Thirteenth, Night of the Living Dead, Lethal Weapons, Harlem Nights, 
uh, what were you, uh, Street Fighter? Jackson Dennis, Jackson. Jackson. Nate. Pretty Ricky with Leprechaun, the Leprechaun, Friday the 13th. Martin, I mean. I just, I've been blessed. I don't, Martin, Pretty Ricky. I don't take, I don't look at it as any major thing that I did because I honestly 100% give the credit to God. Because let me tell you something. There's no way I could have went through what I went through if there wasn't God. It is impossible. I can tell you another incident. It was, I got here in October. I graduated in June, July, uh, July, August, September, October. Four months later, I ran away. That's how, I, that's how excited about my dream I was. Mm. Even though I think it was God too that made me leave then. But, um, hold on a second. Mm. I was there in October. October, November, December, three months later. Now, I was the skinniest one. Like I said, I had already met Carlos Kike, Carlos Kike, Gary, Carlos, Kike, Gary, and Sam. Uh, uh, Kike and Sam are from New York. Carlos from, from uh, uh, Panama, and Gary's from North Carolina. And we were like this little homeless crew. And I remember in, in Christmas Eve, and I was little skinny. Like I said, I looked maybe nine. And I remember I was like so sad because Christmas was the happiest time in our house growing up in North Carolina because we didn't get beaten. <laughs> Everything was good. You didn't get a beat. And we right. got serious beatings. I could tell you stuff that I can't even tell you because they would probably go dig my grandparents up and, and put them in jail. But um, we 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 um, uh, um, we got serious beatings. So what, what, what was I telling you about right now? Sorry. We were talking about Hollywood. You had your homeless, the homeless crew. Okay, yeah. So anyway, so October. So Christmas. No, uh, it's December. It's five minutes before 12 o'clock. Now you cannot tell me this isn't God. Five minutes before 12 o'clock. And there we're walking on a crowded sidewalk downtown Los Angeles on Christmas. I'm being packed. They're walking in front. I'm stepping just a little bit behind them because I'm starting to well up in my eyes because I'm thinking about home. It's Christmas and I ain't got nothing and all of that. And I was walking right behind them. And I'm looking down like this because I don't want them to see me tearing up. And I keep looking up at them and looking down, see if they're looking at me. When I look up at them, a couple of them are looking down while they're walking. I know that. Soon as I walk past where they were walking, I look down, hey, and I find a hundred. Oh, I said this, dear God, please. I prayed while they, I looked to make sure they wouldn't see me. So I was like, this, dear God, please, please, please. You, and I said exactly this verbatim. Please, God, you can't let it be like this. I know that's not proper English, but that's exactly what I said. The moment I opened up my eyes because I was looking down, there was $180 on the sidewalk that I know they wouldn't have passed up, that I know I saw them looking down. There is no way they would have all just missed it sitting right there. We all go to the movies. I take everybody to the movies. I get everybody food. We go eat. They buy. I didn't drink, smoke, none of that. I gave them, they wanted some uh, beer. I bought them all beer. And now when we coming out of the movie theater, I'm like this. Cause I still got money in my pocket. And I'm all happy, you know what I'm saying? And I got some food. I got some money. We done with the food. And I'm all happy. And I'm walking in front of them. And I go, hey, hey, look. Outside, it's two in the morning. Everything's closed. I look up on top of a counter of a store. There's a counter outside. And there's a huge gift wrapped up in all white with a big ass white bow. And there's nobody on the street. And I go, hey, look, look, look. Somebody left their gift. And as soon as I said that, two white people coming out of the theater passed me and said, yeah, I look like it was meant for you. And then I looked at it, and that cannot, I got $180, and I think in the whole 16 years I've lived in North Carolina, every Christmas gift we got probably added up to $180. All right. Damn. All right, let's talk about some of your claims to fame. Now, you got life, you played Biscuit, you had Pretty Ricky on Martin and Joanna Man. Now, we talk a lot on this podcast about black men wearing dresses. You happen to be one of the most famous to wear a dress being Joanna Man. How do you feel about that? How did you feel walking into that role? How do you feel now about it? And do you feel as though it puts a bad stigma on the black male um, persona? Okay. I think that because black men have been so marginalized and black men have been so... Uh, stigmatized and all of that. I think that we do have to watch out for that. But you gotta remember, I, it, it depends on what that the person is. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, um, <laughs> it, I think that that it depends on what the role is. Like you remember, Joanna Man was a guy dressing up as a as a woman so he could continue his career and he could do that. Now, if somebody would have told me, you know, uh, like right now, I don't have a problem. With, I'm a Christian. 
and I believe what God said. And I treat everybody equal. I try to love everybody. I, I, I firm believe in that a, a marriage between a man and a woman, but I believe it's not my position. It's not anybody's position to tell anybody what they should do with their life. God said this, love thy neighbor as thyself. He never once said, love thy straight neighbor. He said, love thy neighbor. So if your neighbor is a gay, you're supposed to love them and judge not that you may not be judged also. So it's our job to love people and not judge them, even though we may have feel in a certain way and, and as, a, as a religious purposes. I treat everybody the same. I love everybody. But if I had to get an address and do something like really, really nasty, I wouldn't do it. But Duana Man was really, really. Let me tell you how I got that role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will Smith had told me for years, you got to start playing golf, Miguel. You got to start playing golf, Miguel. You got to start playing golf, Miguel. That's where the big role. The first time I ever went on a golf course ever i took him up this is years later i took him up on his word and i went out and, and i hired a, uh, an instructor and the first day i'm out hitting this guy taps me on the shoulder and said hey hey my name is jesse vaughn i'm a director i'm doing this movie called joanna man and i would like you to come in and, and, and screen test for it and that's how i got joanna man i went there the next day and we got, uh, flex and everybody was all up in there and i had no clue what it even was about mm. and i just and what they wanted to talk to us and they said because when i got there I remember looking down in the chair and I saw this girl and she was like, beautiful. I'm like, whoa. And he was like, nigga, stop playing. I'm like, what are you talking? Holy shit. It was flex because they were making me look like a girl and a guy. He had his eyes tweezed. And I'm like, shoot, maybe I should have did something because I just came from home. It was like they was like they were like into it. And flex can play basketball damn near as good as Michael Jordan back then. No doubt about it. Mm. Absolutely. 100 percent. 30, 40, 50 a game. Scott, everything. Flex was that good. So when I went into the producers, they wanted to talk to us. I spent my entire 30 minutes trying my best to tell them how incredibly lucky they would get if they had flex in this role. I never, I totally drew a blank about, you know, dude, what are you doing? I was just in there going, dude, have you seen flex? I saw him in the dude. Have you, have you ever watched him play? And I kept going on. And then I did it the second meeting and then the executives, can I ask you a question? He said, why would you be in here trying to give somebody else the role? And I, that was the first time I ever thought about it. I was like, oh, I, I didn't know I was giving it to him. I was just telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. But when it came down to it, they did the screen test. I ended up with the role. Joanna, man, I had no clue how I was going to do the voice for months. Because I got it like four months and I had to go to training. And for months, I'm going in the mirror going, I'm high. Florida. I was trying to say these voices because I didn't want it to sound like her to sound like a, a, a transvestite. So I kept doing it. I couldn't figure it out. I go, you know what? It is what it is. Whatever happens on the come out the first tape, that's what I'm going to use the rest of the movie. So I go to Charlotte. We shot in Charlotte. I'm there about. Looks like. You speak, can you hear me? We still hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. You continue on. We can hear you. Hello. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He blacked out of there. All right, he'll probably jump back in. Yeah, that was that was great, man. I definitely had a few more on one, you know, um, questions in regard. Um, oh yeah. You know, to that, we we'll dig a little bit deeper into some of the other things that. Uh, that's a great question that you asked, Sam, man. Um, definitely, definitely. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'm glad he's being as candid as he is and and giving us the back story on Joanna man but like you said oh god definitely got some more questions involving that is concerned um in particular hollywood and yeah. is that something yeah. that hollywood kind of looks for when they look for the bell actors is that something that they put on them in your opinion brandon t jackson spoke yeah. about it some other people and look like he's back here that he definitely awesome. can uh, answer that for you brother sam and we're back on the hip-hop uncensored podcast with miguel nunez man um can you hear us brother yeah but why my camera ain't working oh there we go you see me? Oh, yep. there we go. We back, brother. We back. Appreciate you. Okay. All right. Okay, good. So where was I? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Filming a Duana Man. What? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good to go. Okay. So anyway, so now I had no clue what I was going to do to voice. So I get there and I'm about two hours ahead and then nobody's there. And it's just me and the makeup lady. And they got a big light and no one's there yet. And I'm sitting in the chair, and this little AD girl comes up and goes, Hi, excuse me, would you like some sweet tea? I went, Oh my God, that's it. 
all I got to do is make a country and then you won't be able to tell. Oh my God. And that was God too. At the last minute, she came in there and gave me that voice. And she was the reason that I had that voice. I think that was probably the most fun I've ever had in my life. Um, life was also a lot of fun. When I did Friday the 13th, part five, taking a shit, getting killed, I was still homeless. When I did Return to <laughs> yeah. Living Dead, which, Return to Living Dead, I was rushing to the set, still homeless. They didn't know this. Uh, but you got to do what you got to do. A lot of people are afraid to make to take the chance. They're afraid to, to risk something. Listen to me. With great promise comes with great reward. You got to really work for what you want. No one is going to give you anything. Period. With that said, do you feel as though there's agenda in Hollywood to put black men in dresses? Because you hear we have conversations. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so not speak all. speak not on all. that if you don't mind, because the day no, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, Jackson. Keep going. What were you saying? No, I'll say because there's been a number of actors. You've heard Dave Chappelle talk about in the past. Brandon T. Jackson, who played in Big Mama's House, who Martin Lawrence spoke on it about how he seemed. It seemed Martin Lawrence did it with Big Mama. He did it with Big Mama's House. Uh, 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 um, Tyler Perry did it. I did it. And there was somebody else that did it. Um, Robin Williams did it. Um, mm -hmm. um, 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 what's the guy named? The Vermin Tootsie did it. Uh, 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 Some Like It Hot did it with all the three of them. The, the Brat Pack did it. Larry Johnson. Um, Huh? Larry Johnson, the basketball player. Oh, big mom. Oh, yeah, grandmama. Grandmama. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah grandmama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think. I just think. No, I don't think. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there are any, any, any. I don't think there's any, any plot or plan with it. I just think those are just great characters that people thought about and tried to capitalize on and made the move. Period. Think what. Look what Tyler Perry did. Tyler Perry is. Tyler Perry is should be a national black treasure. Let me tell you why. Tyler Perry is, did the same thing I did. Tyler Perry, in the beginning, was going out on auditions and auditioning. He wasn't getting in the roles, wasn't coming the way he wanted. So you know what he did? He created his own way. He didn't sit around and complain about it. He didn't sit around and talk about the black man in Hollywood. They ain't doing this for me. You know what I'm mean? saying? White man, he didn't do any of that. He found out what was the situation, and he worked it out and he created his own avenue. And that's exactly what we have to do every single day of our life. Create our own. Believe in ourselves. That's that's the, pretty much the success motto in my book. Because you can never fail as long as you continue trying. You will die trying. But if you, if you continue trying and never get up, you can never fail. You just die trying. Absolutely. Now, I heard a few videos. I've seen it. I haven't seen the video coming to fruition yet, but I think you talked about it maybe as early as a year ago. Is Juana Man 2 in the works? Are you still doing that? Yes, the table? yes we are. Hold on. One. Okay. Okay. Plug, plug yes, it is. Okay, cool, cool. So you took a little break, you know what I mean? Great, great segment. I'm like the way that he broke that down to, yeah. uh, this evening. Definitely, man. We're in the building right now with Miguel Nunez Jr. You know what I mean? Great actor, producer, I'm, writer. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not playing no more basketball, though. Are you no. not balling? <laughs> Did you want to too old now to do that shit? <laughs> Hell to the no. That's them, them days though. It's a great story though. It's a great story we're working with. You want me to tell you the story? Yeah. Yeah, let me share, share it with the people. Share it with the people. Uh, Post. Should I tell you the story? Okay, I'm gonna tell you the story that we're working with. Okay, you see Jamal Jeffries, he's at the bar. He's hanging out at the bar, still disheveled, still looking a little fly, kind of like me. Um huh. so now uh this dude standing next to him looking at him at the bar. He's drinking. He's, hey man, did you used to be Jamal Jeffries? He said, I'm still Jamal Jeffries, motherfucker. <laughs> so, then he, so, so then you look over and they start to come, these girls, the waitress, waitresses start coming about with the candles and all of these candles and all the big ass bottles of uh, crystal and everything. And I'm like, what's going on over there? And I want the biggest, sexiest, I want a girl that's at least 200 pounds, sexy, fine, beautiful, big woman. And she's over there and I go, so what's going on over there? Oh, you know who that? That's the Queen of Bishop. She just hit the $575 million uh, a lottery, uh, Atlanta lottery. I'm like, okay, but now you want to see Jamal. Well, you're about to see him. So now I go, she's no, don't mess with him. Her boyfriend ain't no joke. So I go over there and her boyfriend is, um, uh, is no joke. So anyway, don't matter. I ain't worrying about her boyfriend. So the next thing you know, cut to me and her in her hotel room working it out. So then her boyfriend come knocking on the door. Hey, hey, what's going on? He comes in there. I jump out the back door. I'm going to make it quick. I'm not going to tell you everything. I jump out the back window. I got my clothes in my, in my hand. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm hiding behind a, a, a dumpster. The next thing I know, I look around side. Two police are shaking down this drug dealer for cash. They end up shooting him and taking all of his cash. I see it. 
I move back, try to keep from them seeing me. They hear me knock something over. They start chasing me. They think I did. I'm like, what the fuck? They got suspect. I'm like, what the fuck you mean suspect? <laughs> I'm running down the alley. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I run up to this wall and I'm standing at this wall. And I said, dear God, please, 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 God, <laughs> don't let. If you get me out of this, I, I'll never do anything wrong again. Just then, the door opens behind me, and there's a guy comes out. He goes, Ramon, and I go, what? He goes, Ramon, you're late. And I look back and see the cops coming. I'm like, you, you're Ramon, right? And I go, yes. And then he, we walk inside. And turn out it's a, a Lakala son of a bitch. Bastard. It's a it's a Lakaja Fali show. Mm. Well, hold on. What? I'm doing two meetings. Anyway, uh, it's a Lakaja Fali show. I'm on stage now, I'm kind of made up and I'm dressing, but I don't know the moves. The cops come in the front door, they're looking around. Now I make a bad move, my wig fall off, they see me, and I'm out the back door, they chasing me again. I'm running, I'm running, Lord, Lord, Lord. I see a car parked on the next to the street, next to the ATM. I jump in the car, I duck down, and the cops go running by. Right at that point, this big German lady jumps in and said, Margaret? And I go, yeah, yeah, yes. She said, oh, let's go, I'm about to pick you up. So now we're going cross country, here's the story. We're going cross country. She's uh, in from Germany. She's just taken over a girls' reformatory school as the athletic director. We get into an accident. She's going to be in there for a while. I switch up our chart because she's going to be gone. I call my manager. I tell him what's going on. He said, you got to lay low until I can figure this out. And so I got to stay low and I got to stay disguised because they're looking for Jamal. So now I end up changing charts, going on to the reformatory school. And now I'm the female director of a girls' reformatory school. So that's how we're trying to do it. So you don't have a lot of young folks in it this time. Yeah, a lot of young people doing a whole lot of stuff because, you know, I ain't able like I used to be. <laughs> when is that set to drop? Oh, no, we're still working on the script, story, and all of that. So it's you, probably you, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year. Are you executive producing that as well? Or you you got to hand in the writing and stuff? I'm going to hopefully, I'm probably about 80% sure I'm a director. Nice. Let me ask you this. Um, who, who, since you've been in Hollywood and since you've been in the game, have been your influences? I've seen you have a number of roles in a lot of Martins, movies, Thin Line Between Love and Hate, Martin the series, obviously, and in life. Um, is he somebody that is a close friend of yours? What's your relationship with Martin? And who in Hollywood has kind of, um, that, that you would say kind of helped you along the way, if anybody, or who would you consider a friend in Hollywood? No one has helped me, but in Hollywood, I mean, the person who um, I think uh, I admire was Eddie Murphy was because he broke down so many uh, barriers for us in the beginning. Because in the beginning, I started everything was uh, we need to put Eddie Murphy type or Eddie Murphy type, Eddie Murphy type. So he broke down broke down so many um, barriers and, and 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 Sam Jackson because Sam Jackson is somebody who just didn't give up, never stop. I like people who persistent, who go through stuff. Uh, 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 um, um, a TV host. I'm doing every hosting show on TV now. Um, you said, oh, damn, I can't believe I remember. Steve Harvey. Okay. Steve okay. Harvey was sleeping around, sleeping in his car. You know what I'm saying? I, the people who have overcome, those are the people that I admire. I mean, those people that, that I look up to, people that have overcome so much, so many obstacles to get what they got. Not people who are handed to them, or it's been easy because no one ever gave me anything. I've seen people come out to me, get rolled, get this. Nothing ever came easy for me. And I don't, I'm, I'm glad. Right. When these media stories and stuff that published, like, oh, do we to believe this stuff? Because, you know, we do this, you know, for a living. But how do we know that all the stuff that we see, you know, is, is credible? Talk about like the it's not, it's Talk not, about it's that. It's never going to be credible. Right. Nothing is. It's not going to be credible. It's not credible. You can't because it, you got to remember, Eddie, Eddie said it once the best to me. He said the press is like a, a hungry monster when it doesn't get what it wants it will make up and create what it wants. Mm. That's exactly what they are. I'll give you an example. Let's take about the, the uh, incident that I just had at Brown. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I walked away, went to the counter. The lady said, okay, your credit card don't work. But I said, okay, listen, I'm looking at another one. She said, okay, fine. But I said, well, I have to stand in this line when I come back. Oh, shit. I said, well, I have to stand in line. Yes, sir. She, said, no, you won't have to. she said, no, you won't have to stand in line again inside, but you will outside. I'm like, well, shit, that's the most biggest line. So she said, oh, I, can, I, I can do it about it. So I went on the left. I came back later. I actually called the police to go back with me. And it's called a civil standby, a civil standby. I called the police, asked for a civil standby to go with me because I told them what happened. So we go back and, and the manager, 
which is a never told. Me and the manager, we're really good. We're really close now because I'm going to tell you what, what we're doing now. But she was really tough. And she was like, and I said, because every morning I would go there and I got to be honest with you, I give her so much hell about the line, how she wasn't good and it's taking too long and she don't know what she's doing and blah, blah, blah. So this time when I go back, I walk straight to the front. She said, you know, you can't walk in the front. You got to get in line. I said, because I'm, I'm not here. Hold on. Damn it. Son of a bitch. Hold on, guys. It's not, I'm not about to leave you. All right, take take your time, brother. Definitely, definitely. This is great. This okay, is great. Okay, I think I got it. Hold on, hold on. One more. Okay. We in the building. I don't know if this is gonna work, but let me try it again. Cause I'm at the plug it in a different hole. Oh, uh, this ain't working. Ugh. In the building right now, Nunez. So anyway. Mm -hmm. So yes. Oh shit, man. Yeah. So when I go back, she refused to the police had the police come back and she refused yeah. to take the money. She did not want to take the money because she can't decide to come back and pay. But she is absolutely right. I have I have fans who are like upset at her. Listen to me. You can't decide to go and come back and pay whenever you're wrong, you, when you want. She was right. I was wrong. But what we're doing now is turning this into an amazing thing. Ralph's and I are now are going to give away thousands of dollars in Ralph's $50 uh, 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 Ralph gift card. Um, actors who are sick and shut in, who can't really do it for themselves, for homeless and for elderly. So Ralph, myself, and we're getting ready to do it. It's going to end, and, and Leah, uh, um, um, we're going to do a huge giveaway. Shoot, this thing is still about to. My phone is not charged. We're doing a huge giveaway, and it's going to go to first responders actors who don't really have anything there's a lot of actors in the old folks home who can't get out who don't have enough so we're going to turn this in a, a, a opportunity to help others using Ralph's gift cards so we're going to turn this into something really big and spectacular i'm going to be posting very soon um how everybody can get involved and help so we're going to use this uh ralph situation working with ralph to give away thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gift cards to um, the people at the hospital. Because you got to remember, there's some, some of those people who are single mothers, who are mm -hmm. working all that long in the hospital. They don't have time to even get groceries. They don't have time. With... These people really, really need us right now. So we're going to turn this situation into an opportunity to give. And I'm going to ask you guys, because I'm going to, I got your number, I'm going to send you, and I want you to help post so we can get donations to help all of the people who really and truly need it. I've had so many people offer this, they were believing all that hype, and they were offering this, so I just turned that into giving and buy Ralph's gift cards. And we're gonna be posting all the information for it, so you'll be able to see it. Look out for my Facebook, look out for, uh, look here too, because I'm gonna be sending them the information, and we're gonna show you how you guys can get involved, because everybody, we are all in this together. That's dope, man. And I'm glad you turned that negative situation to a positive. We like we told you didn't want to talk about it because we because the way it came out, it, if they, they made it seem like you went in there, and you robbed the store because you was broke, you had stuff going on, like and it just didn't seem right. We didn't know you well enough to kind of get this interview. We was like, hell no, nah, we ain't putting this shit up and, and smearing this brother's name. We're gonna make sure we do this right. But I'm glad and we appreciate that you came on our platform and set the record straight, definitely. Oh, no, no doubt about it, brother. But, you know, the people that matter really know, because, you I mean, you know. But I, I'm not worried about any of that. I was just worried about turning it into something where somebody can benefit besides me. That's the best part about it. Dope. It's absolutely dope. Um, I want to talk about, you know, any upcoming roles that you have that you want to share with the people, any movie ideas that the people should be looking forward, you know, from you in the future that you would like to share with the people? Yes. I want you guys to make sure you look out. Of BET Her. We are going to be on BET Her this season uh, to start out with. It's family business, second season of family business, Carl Weber's family business. If you caught last season, this season is going to be fire. I promise you. Carl Weber is off the chain. Darren Henson is off the chain. Ernie Hudson is off the chain. Javicia is off the chain. This entire cast, Sean Ringard, Ringard is, we are, it is so, this is one of the shows. I've been so excited to go to. A lot of times when you're an actor, you've been doing it so long, 
you do it and you go to the set and you get it done. This cast, this crew, and the way he writes, you just get there. You be like, this, you can't wait for the next script. This show is going to be fire. Make sure you get BET Her. I'm sorry, BET Plus. BET Plus. Okay. BET Plus. BET Plus Family Business. I think we're going to be coming about June. And they should bring it up since everybody's at home right now. They should actually Word. move up. But I don't know right now when it's probably going to be June. So look out for that. Um, I just did another movie. Let me look at the name of it. I can't think of the name of it. Hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just did another movie. Ain't it nice to do movies and not even remember the names of them shit? God <laughs> damn, I, yeah, man. I would remember every single thing. I'm like, look. Yeah, man. Okay, oh, oh here we go. It's called, um, shit, I can't even tell you the name of it. Hold on. Oh, Blood on Her Badge. Blood on Her Badge. Blood on Her Badge. Watch out for Blood on Her Badge. Brother, I probably got, it's some, so many times I'll sit here watching television. And I'll be watching a movie and watching a movie, and the next thing you know, I'll pop up on like, what the hell? <laughs> it's probably been 15 movies that I've done I've never even seen. Damn. Well, my final my final question to you would be um just a little bit of inspiration from the people. I you said it, you said it on this podcast. People used to call you an ugly, skinny motherfucker who can't act. How does an ugly, skinny motherfucker from North Carolina turn himself into pretty Ricky? Fontaine and find what success Hollywood as you have today. I cannot tell you. It was not my will, but God's will. I cannot tell you how I did it. It had to have been God because I didn't know how. I didn't take any acting lesson. I didn't do all the things that were necessary. So I can't take the credit. So it's not by my will. It's by his will. And that's where I'm going to leave it on that. Absolutely. And where, where can everybody find you now if they want to get in contact with you for, for whatever? Put that out there, yeah. please. M. Nunez Jr. Uh, 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 M. Nunez Jr. is my Instagram. Miguel A. Nunez Jr. is Facebook, Twitter, uh, or M. Nunez Jr. 1 at Gmail. M. Nunez Jr. 1 at Gmail. Absolutely. If you're ever in the Atlantic City area or Philadelphia area, man, be sure to I'm definitely, say I'm that. I'm going to definitely check you out. Definitely. Yeah, please Appreciate do, you. man. We were humbled by this interview. Thank you so much, fans of yours, since we were children. Yeah. Definitely appreciate you stopping by and taking a little bit of your time. If you want to do it again when I, when I get more information on the show, and when we get ready to do the premiere, maybe I get me and a couple of the other cast members to come on and from family business to come on for you as well. Let's do it. Brother, the door's always open, man. You you can come on anytime. Like I said, we're humbled by this. It ain't as easy to get you Hollywood motherfuckers as you made it seem. This yeah. has been very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we're out here doing it on our own man but we appreciate you appreciate your time you know the loyal, the loyal listeners will love it man salute Mikhail Nunez Jr if you got any parting words you can drop them right now if not hey man we appreciate your time God bless you guys that's all I gotta say God bless every single body stay inside protect yourself protect your family wear your mask this is real absolutely thank appreciate you very much you. brother be safe brother peace peace yeah, man, so powerful, man. We did it, baby. Yeah, did man, it, we baby. got a beautiful interview. <laughs> Victor, intern is out the fucking woodshed, man. Yeah. He's sweating a little bit. Nah, man, it's all good. Really appreciate that brother's time. Very candid. You yeah, know, a lot yeah. of things he we'll said. Talk. We're going to drop a lot of the uh, segments on all three of the platforms. Yep. We're going to have a nice discussion about yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Tomorrow on the platform, we got some great interviews lined up further oh, in the week, yeah. man. Got, got some two good tomorrow, interviews. Got baby. two tomorrow, man. So yeah, we're moving yeah. on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. <laughs> We were at the 54 minute mark, man. So, yeah, man, that's all I got to say, man. Very happy and humbled to have that brother on the platform. Yeah, I mean, real quick, man. I mean, was giving the uh, little promo code for the Raycons. I think it's, uh, what is it? Uh, I got you, brother. It's right. buyraycon.com backslash HHU 101. That again is raycon.com, buyraycon.com backslash HHU 101, man. We've done a couple lives on the platform, yeah, yeah, no got doubt. some great responses. Hey, man. Stamp of approval, man. If shit to all that, go grab yours. Nice and inexpensive. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. Hey, man. Hit that five star rating, Let's man. Go, we definitely, man. you told you, was giving y'all some powerful interviews. There it is. Hit the five star rating and do not forget to subscribe because you don't know. We got to hit them all. We got another couple, two more powerful interviews tomorrow. So you want to make sure you subscribe right now to the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast to get all those exclusives, man. It's been beautiful today. Bro. And there's a friend that you got that does not listen to the podcast, share that shit with them right now, whether you're watching on either of the three platforms or you're listening right now in your headphones, share this shit. Let them know who the baddest podcast is. This is Sandman Viral Hip Hop News. Oh God, Hip Hop News Uncensored. Together we are the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. Over and out. Peace. Peace.